Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of my Kickstarter Diaries. Do you know, this week I was accused by multiple content creators as having a Kickstarter addiction. And to that I say, accurate. And if you're here watching and playing along, then I'm sorry, but you guys are totally complicit in my addiction. So let's get started for week commencing the 19th of October. Now, the first game I want to talk about this week is one that kind of took me by surprise, actually, uh, Bios, Mesofauna and Galenus. So I had spoken about being excited about these upcoming um, this week, but now that I've actually seen them, I'm even more excited. Uh, Bios Mesofauna is, of course, part of the Bios series. And in case you missed it, last week we reviewed Pax Pamir. And Pax Pamir was a game that we saw as a bit of a gateway into the Pax series. And now, you know, I want to try them all. And um, I feel that way about this game. It's been designed to introduce people or I guess be a more accessible version of a BIOS game and for that reason I'm totally all in. I can't wait to kind of get involved and see what this series is all about. Um, I think the reason that I haven't got into BIOS series before is a lot of them are cooperative and I believe this one is competitive which is much more um, up our alley um, but it's also by a designer um, Eklund who he um, does a lot of PAX games um, and is very kind of famous for that, but also the BIOS series too. And so, um, you know, I, I kind of want to see what how his mind works and what is this all about. So um, I'm excited about that. The other thing is that it is compatible with BIOS Megafauna. Um, I think it's Megafauna. Um, so, you know, if you like Mesafauna, you can kind of um, make it harder by adding in the other game and then having kind of a bigger game. So I'm excited about that. What's super interesting about this um, Kickstarter is that it's a two for one. Well, you can get them as a bundle, but um, it's also for this game Galenus. And Galenus, I hadn't heard much about. Um, it's a really dry Euro theme, which I love. Um, and it's about your, uh, I think it's like Imperial Rome, and you're playing um, as young doctors trying to impress Galenus with, um, I guess, your discoveries and curing all of the multiple um, diseases and things that come along with being um, back in Rome in the day. I think they said the average lifespan was 19, and so there were lots, lots of things to cure. Um, and it looks like, you know, a typical heavy Euro, um, which Maggie and I love. Um, but I also appreciate some of the, um, <laughs> the, if you have a look at these patients, the meeples here is like yellow bile, blood, phlegm and black bile, which is just disgusting. But I appreciate, um, you know, how different that is and how interesting it makes the game sound. So um, I'm all in on, on both of these games and excited to receive them. The next game that was an instant back for us this week, or I should say, I say us, but Maggie has nothing to do with my spending habits. So um, for me, it was Hoop Gods. And um, I actually, um, I was really intrigued by this game because um, I'm so, so impressed by these designers and by Board Game Brothers, the um, publisher, just for being able to get, you know, um, well, first Rap Gods, um, it, it was so revered uh, as a game, but also for what it did for the hobby in terms of um, improving diversity um, and, you know, and kind of getting people into the world of rap culture. And that's what this they're now doing with this um, basketball follow up game. And so, of course, I actually really wanted to get my hands on rap gods and I was super depressed to find out that. Um, Australia was not one of the countries that was able to get the reprint, um, but I have gotten in contact with them and they said that it could be possible. Um, so I've backed Hoop Gods and I'm hoping to also throw in um, Rap Gods. But um, this game is really interesting. I think you're rolling die um, to create combos to pull off like cool basketball tricks. Uh, you know, someone who's uh, more sporty than me would probably be able to tell you the technical names of those things. Um, but a shout out to um, Meeple Overboard did a great playthrough of this. So if you're interested, um, check out their video, which um, gives a complete rundown of the game. Now, the next game is another one that took me by surprise. Don't Get Got is a game that I think it came out a year ago and it's a party game. 
and it was one that I'd had on my to buy list pre COVID. And because it plays so many people, I just, you know, when COVID hit, it kind of was off the agenda and we started buying a lot more two player games. And, um, but this got relaunched as part of Or Shucks. I'm actually not sure if it was this week, but I'm throwing it in here anyway. Um, and, uh, shut up and sit down and now involved with big potato games to bring, they love the game so much and they did a great review on it, which put it on my radar in the first place, but they were asked to come back and do a special edition. And, um, I was all in on this to begin with, because if you don't know, don't get got it's, um, a, a party game where everybody has secret objectives and you have this little folder envelope that has those secret objectives in it. And if you can achieve three of them, then you've won. And there are things to do with the people in the room. So it might be something like um, get someone to ask if you've been crying or um, take this piece of paper and try and put it onto a, onto someone, like put it in their pocket without them noticing um, or get someone to call you by your name. Um, so all these like little challenges that uh, everybody is doing and they've all, they're all individual. And um, I think you can play it with a group up to 10. This new, this new game is two to 10. Um, and I, I actually um, I have a small team of 10 at my office and like this is why I wanted to get this game because I just think it would be you know so funny to have this going on um, during a work week um, and uh, yeah they they launched this it was originally quite expensive particularly with the shipping they hadn't anticipated so many people wanting it from all over the world and so they rapidly responded to the feedback on that and they've reduced their shipping costs they're getting it manufactured um, out of Asia I believe now and um, they've also, as an apology for that, they threw in all of the original game's um, challenges into this new box. And I think that was a great um, recovery um, at the start of this campaign. And um, I'm really excited to get this one and give it a go. And I'm being terrible at it. I'm really bad at like covert operations. So we'll see. Now, those were the ones that I instantly backed. Now, I think... What everybody is most excited about this week is the Grand Austria Hotel expansion. And Grand Austria Hotel is a game, um, a very well-loved Euro. It's particularly well-loved because it plays quite well at two players or a lot of people that's exclusively how they play it. Um, it came out in, I think, 2015. And, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's just one of those gems that everyone loves to mention when um, they talk about uh, Euro games. And for that reason, you know, it was pretty exciting for expansion to come out, but I, I have so many feelings about this campaign and I'm so frustrated at them for, um, for what they've done. Um, it's, it's just, to me, it's a bit of a hot mess. Um, as someone who was like super excited to back it immediately, um, jumping in, it's, it's very confusing because, what they've created is um, this wonderful expansion called Let's Waltz. And ultimately, this is what I'm, I'm most excited about to, uh, because Maggie and I do like Grand Austria Hotel. It's probably not one of our favorites because um, it, it's why I, I guess it's not tense enough for us. But so anything that can bring in a new element or a new path to victory, I think is going to be quite exciting for us. So I, I did want to pick up Let's Waltz, but then they made it so that the different components of um, Let's Waltz were stretch goals. And so that was quite confusing about like kind of what are you backing and, and what are you getting now? But then the other confusing thing about this campaign is that they also deluxified the base game. And well, let's have a look at the deluxification. So they've reworked the illustrations for all cards from this to this. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, sure that, yeah. Okay. They've enhanced the illustrations. I can see that. Um, but you know, I, I probably, they're walking a very hard balance between people who love the original game and then trying to bring something new. Um, I think this is neither here nor there. And I would have preferred that they kind of took a stance to either keep it all old school, keep it original, or just like go hard out and like update the game. Um, this just kind of, yeah. Um, and then the wooden resources. So a lot of people were excited about the deluxification of this game. And again, I feel like this is like, 
oh, you really have one foot stuck in like 2015 because um, game deluxification has come a long way. And um, look, let me show you because I wanted to, to buy the deluxify game, but Maggie and I currently use these, which are little um, tokens that we've printed and painted. You can see there's a little strudel and a little cake and a little wine glass. And a lot of people have um, pimped their games with things like that. And um, I don't know, these wooden meeples, again, I think they fit the old game, but I'm not super excited about this. And I really wanted to be, I wanted there to be really lifelike strudels. Give me all the strudels. <sighs> Anyway, um, you know, wooden tokens, okay, and a new box design. Okay, so there's nothing here that's like, I can't wait to upgrade to the deluxe version. Um, and, and then what's further interesting about this is just the price point. I can't get over the price point, and that's why I haven't backed it yet. And, you know, yes, I have a Kickstarter addiction, and um, yes, I like back a lot of things, but I'm still conscious of like the value of money and for an expansion to cost almost the same as um and a whole other game is is like quite a mental challenge to get over but i'm scrolling like mad because i want to show you like there's just so much stuff in here and they really didn't make it easy about like if you have the base game this is what you should get or if you just want the expansion then this is what you should get the confusion between the new base version and the sleeves and all of this is just it's just not clear and it's a real pain to navigate and a lot of people I feel would just look at this and just be like mm, no um but look at this I love 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 this elevator and this is so hilarious because I said to Maggie oh they've got a like a dice tower as part of Grand Austria Hotel and she said please tell me it's an elevator and <laughs> like that's just how her thematic brain works. So as I saw an elevator and I was like, oh, that's such a good idea. But I would never have thought of it by myself um, because I just like don't, don't take in the theme. Um, but 49 euros, 49 euros. Guys, come on. Oh, it hurts me. Um, 35 euros if you want to organizer in there uh if you want to organize it for the expansion as well another 30 euros um okay and this is where it starts to get confusing a slip case eight euros will that house the original base game plus the expansion or just the new base game i'm so confused by that um the custom dice is uh, meh like okay they've got a little border around them like not super thematic <sighs> so yeah i mean i'm just i don't know I don't know how I feel about this. I am super depressed about it. I wanted to be super excited about it and I'm not. And um, yeah, I should say that the, the price of the expansion alone is like 65 Australian dollars and then the postage is really expensive as well. So now I'm looking at like close to $100 for an expansion and uh, like I'm yet to see why I should kind of back this now. So whew, yeah, okay, let's just move on from there. Okay, so... On to the alter ego, Amy, Amy on a different timeline. Why would I back if I was not me? Um, and here are some things that I just thought you might be interested in this week. Um, Townsfolk Tussle was one that I was really hotly anticipating. Um, I love, love, love the artwork. I think it's so cool. And it's uh, the, the thing that takes me out of this game and not the reason why I'm not backing it yet. Um, no, probably not backing this one uh, is because it's a co-op boss battler. And I thought last week, you know, maybe the art would be enough to get me into that. Like it looks really fun. And then I watched a playthrough this week and I had to be realistic about our tasting games. Um, this is probably not for us, but um, I have to give a shout out um, to the guys here, the publishers, who are the publishers, uh, Panic Roll, um, because there is a, you know, there's a lesbian love story in there. And I mean, I just, you know, that almost got it back for me just because it's so nice to see, um, you know, our own love story represented here. Although the character is a bit stranger than us, maybe, maybe not. Um, another one is Freedom 5, and this has been kind of all over all of the reviews recently. Um, it was uh, kind of well loved by Tom Vassell at Dice Tower. Um, it's a, oh, actually it's a Dice Tower Essentials game. There you go. That's how much they love it. 
Um, but for us, it's um, many things that we don't like. And, you know, it's cooperative comic book adventure. Um, none of those things are things that we're interested in. But I just wanted to highlight it in case you're waiting for it or in case um, it is something that you're into. You could um, go and check this one out. And the other one of the same is, uh, well, not the same, but the same for us in that uh you know, we're not probably giving it a look in is Darkest Dungeon. I mean, it's already um, met well and truly met its campaign goal. It's made millions of dollars already. Um, and it's uh, from, I believe this one is from a video game, um, but it's a cooperative dungeon crawler. So immediately we're out, but also the kind of horror dark theme is, is not really our thing either. But if you're into that kind of thing and you're into minis, um, certainly you might want to check this out because look at all those minis. There's so many of them. You could paint for ages. Um, the next one I'm really excited to talk about because this is an upcoming Kickstarter campaign for next week, um, Brick and Mortar. And I believe that this game is going to do extremely well. And it's one that is completely flying under the radar. Now, full disclosure, we did a preview of this, but we only did a preview of this because I read about it and I was like, mm, a delightfully tense economic game. Well, that sounds like well and truly um, our kind of thing. And so I actually contacted Nick and I congratulated him on how it looked and, you know, that it looks really exciting. Couldn't wait to see the campaign. And he happened to have a copy in Australia, a demo copy, and asked if we wanted to try it out. And so we we. We said yes, he didn't ask us to review it or anything, uh, but we loved it so much that we did a preview review and I believe that's gonna be part of the campaign. It's already up on YouTube. I'll link to it here in case you wanna check it out. Um, essentially in this game, you are um, managing a retail store or a series of retail stores and it is very much based on the dynamics of supply and demand where you are trying to stock your stores and then fulfill orders um, based on demand that's generated um, by other players and yourself in the market. Um, and it's highly competitive. It's secret bidding. It's super interesting. I won't go on and on about it now because I'll probably do that next week. Um, but just to put it on your radar, that is coming up for next week. And the other game and the um, another game that I'm very excited about is Endless Winter. Now, Endless Winter is, um, you can see here that the artwork is um, by the same um, designer or the Miko um, who has done the designs for Architects of the West Kingdom and Viscounts and all of that series. And so anyone who's familiar, familiar with those series would instantly probably feel drawn into this game, which I actually think is like really kind of clever to also engage an artist who's been part of popular games um, because instantly this got my attention. But then when I started digging a bit deeper, um, the designer is, um, oh, I'm going to say this wrong, Stan Gordonski, um, who actually is the designer of Rurik. And I am yet to play Rurik. I've been trying to get my hands on the copy of the Kickstarter edition and I just, oh, I don't know why I didn't back it again. Um, but uh, Stan, yeah, Stan's the designer of that. And when I read about the action selection mechanism that's in that game, um, that's what got me really excited about it. So I have no doubt that Endless Winter will also have some clever mechanics in there. And that's what it has got my attention. And um, I probably will end up backing this because it just looks like something that Maggie and I would love. So that's it for this week. I would say that it's a small week, um, but some of my... Um, people who believe that I have a Kickstarter problem might say that it's a big week for them. But for me, I'm pretty happy about the level of restraint that I've shown. And um, it looks like there's a few upcoming instant backs next week. So um, I hope everybody's enjoying all of um, Spiel. I'm certainly having a great time getting around to all the chat rooms and seeing all the games being live demoed. Um, I've pre-ordered way too many games. So, you know, outside of Kickstarter, there is another terrible habit going on, which is just buying all of the other new games as well. But anyway, thanks for joining me. Problem halved is a problem. Problem shared is a problem halved. Um, so I hope to see you here next week so I can continue justifying all my purchases. Bye for now.